My grandmother was not my hero. Florence Blitzer did not bake cookies. She did not take me to museums. She never sat me down to share any of her hard-won wisdom. I hardly even knew her, to be honest. After Florence died, my family sat around the kitchen table sifting through her old photographs. We didn't really share too many stories. There weren't all that many stories to share. I mean, there was a story about dumping the bowl on my aunt's head and sending her off to school with the oatmeal still dripping down her scalp. Or the story of how she let my own unbathed mother run wild as a girl, too dirty to be welcome in her friend's house. My mother and her sister made a miraculous psychic recovery, achieving solid middle-class stability and reestablishing family bonds in a single generation. But in a stash of photographs from her young womanhood, I saw something new in Florence that made me wonder, something that moved me beyond the profound ambivalence at that table, something that clarified a feeling that had always been in the mix, but maybe in conflict with other patterns in my personality, that rebellious thread. After a while, it didn't have anywhere left to go for Florence, so it just kind of stubbed itself out in the hard ground of responsibility, wrote an unfulfilling work, a cold marriage, and unharnessed energy. Years later, I'm sitting in an office, gasping under a boulder of tedious professionalism. This isn't how it's supposed to be. Cannot this be this small? Isn't working. I, I have to be more. I than have this. to do more than this. I am bored. I detest. I just I reject it all. This is a this waste. This is meaningless. I just can't do this anymore. See, I can't put my own kids through the hell of a wrecked mother, so I stopped flinching when my own fingers brush against Florence's thread of rebellion. Maybe I'll even curl my fingers around it, yank it out of the ground, see where it takes me if I let it. Huh. Thank you, Florence Blitzer, for your hard-won wisdom. <laughs>